<laughs> All right, back in the Sir Yacht Show. We are live with Browns fullback Johnny Stannon. Uh, Johnny, thanks so much for joining us. I, I first off, I wanted to, um, I want to apologize to you. Uh, a few months ago, uh, I was we were Sunday Night Football. I was watching Vita Vea, defensive lineman for the Buccaneers, and yep. he was playing fullback for the for the Bucks. And I was like, "Holy cow, that man is an absolute unit!" So I so I tweet, "Could you imagine if Miles Garrett played fullback for the Browns? Like that would be crazy." I did not think many people would see that tweet. I did not think you would see that tweet. You quote tweeted that, and that tweet absolutely blew up, and people are like, oh, LMAO owned this guy's fraud, whatever. And I'm like, whatever. So I, I just, first off, I wanted to apologize for that, and I, I hope you can forgive me. No need to apologize. I think we were both uh, both having some fun with it. No, it was, it was, it was really fun. So yeah. um, you've had quite the journey to get to this point uh, in your career, and uh, I think you've really embodied someone who's always been ready for their shot. So just to – I know I'll miss some details, but I wanted to run it off real quick, and then I'll ask my sure. question. So you started off as a quarterback for, uh, for your high school, Santa Margarita Catholic. Uh, you had a season-ending knee surgery, uh, season-ending knee injury your senior uh, senior high school season. You go to Nebraska uh, for one season. You're listed as a third-string quarterback. You then transfer to Saddleback College. Uh, yep. You absolutely ball out there. And then you transfer to UNLV. Uh, you had another season-ending injury, I believe, your redshirt junior season. Uh, and then so what do you do? Naturally, you go to the most brutal position in all of sports, I would say, and you go to fullback. Uh, and you not only play the fullback position, you start three games at quarterback. You play defense. You play special teams. You block a punt. You are literally the Swiss Army knife of football players. And then you go undrafted to the uh, to Vikings May of 2018. Uh, you're placed on season-ending injury reserve uh, in August. You go back and forth on on and off of the practice squad. You sign with the Browns January of 2020 after uh, you know being elevated on and off the practice squad. You finally seize the moment. Week seven against the Broncos, Case Keenum throws a one-yard touchdown pass to you. So I know we were all super hype about that. So my, my question is your story and your perseverance uh, getting to the NFL and where you are. Uh, it's very unique. Uh, it's very inspiring. I think that's why it kind of resonates with a lot of Browns fans. So my question's uh, to you are, what is it about fullback that made you uh, pursue that position? And uh, what kind of keeps you motivated as you move along in your NFL career? Um, well, before I ask, answer that question, I, I want to, uh, there's one part to clarify. I, I didn't actually end up playing fullback until I was in the NFL. Um, my senior year of college, when I came back from my knee injury, I just wasn't a starter for the team uh, at quarterback. But then I asked to play some special teams. They brought me on some defense. And then I went back to quarterback after an injury. So when I was trying out for the Vikings during their rookie mini camp, and when I was just trying out for the team, uh, I was trying out as a tight end, and then they full, they tie, they signed me as a fullback. Um, wow! So I Wikipedia didn't, I didn't is wrong, by the way. We need to update that. Wikipedia is <laughs> is not on their game. Yeah, not. On I'll their make game. sure to edit. I think any of us can do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, me. I'm correct. But uh, but yeah, my first uh, my first game of fullback was with preseason um, with the Vikings before I broke my ankle. Um, but as far as uh, like. You know, to answer your question about how what it's like to you know compare it, comparing it to the other positions and what how I feel like I fit there, you know, switching from quarterback to fullback isn't a high school quarterback dream. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's not it's not the dream. But man, like I could not have asked for it to go any other way. I would not have been able to make it to the NFL as a quarterback, knowing now like what guys like Baker and Case can do. Like I, it's just it they wow me every single day. And, uh, you know, knowing what my skill set is as like a hard nosed guy who was always a downhill runner at quarterback, knowing that that is what I can bring to the position, uh, along with, you know, transitioning that into like blocking sense. Um, it took a while to get used to it, but I feel like I've, I'm starting to, you know, fill into my potential and I'm excited to, I'm excited to see, you know, where, where, what I can do in, in the future. Once I'm given a, you know, given a shot to be able to play a couple uh, more than just a couple games and. Um, I really feel like I, I'm, you know, I, I haven't shown, you know, quite yet what everything I can do. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of in that sweet spot right now where the season's over and you don't have a ton of team commitments. Are you kind of in fuck it mode? Are you able to like eat what you want? Are you able to do what you want? Like what is your typical beginning of the off season routine look like? You know, I always tell myself, I'm going to give myself a lot of off time, I'm going to do, I'm not going to work out. I'm not going to be doing anything. But then, you know, when you're waking up at like, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, when you're used to getting up at six o'clock, 
it's uh and you're spending you know the whole morning early afternoon not doing anything you start feeling like man i really get just gotta like do something with my days so i've started getting back into li- to working out not really anything to like get season ready more just off season you know saying you know allows myself to feel like i can you know not necessarily eat everything i want to but you know not quite as be you know be quite as uh, strict as during the season um but yeah you know it's it's uh, a lot less of a commitment these first couple weeks first month or so of the off season and you know you get to be uh you get to be a regular person again and uh you know watch your significant other go to work during the day and just hang out at home <laughs> it's dope <laughs> it's very dope Okay. So, okay. So Johnny, my question to you, my first question to you is uh, you've obviously been in that Browns locker room for like the entire season. So my question to you is like, you've been around like a bunch of personalities like miles Garrett and uh, Nick Chubb. Who is your favorite teammate in that Browns locker room? Uh, Andy and I gelled together really well. Um, We knew each other at Nebraska and um, it wasn't until I came here that we really became friends. Um, Obviously playing the same position where we get competitive with each other, but not to a point where it really interferes with our friendship at all. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll spend, we'll spend a lot of days together, you know, just, just chilling, but obviously with COVID, you can't really hang out with guys outside. Um, one of the other guys I get, get along really great with is Dearness Johnson. Um, dude's a character, um, that whole running back room is, you know, I know, I know Nick, you know, hides it a little bit better than, than most, but, um, he's, you know, right there with Kareem and Dearness and Andy, who are like, just, you know, big personalities in, in the locker room. And, um, you know, it, it takes becoming his teammate to really see it but nick does have a great personality and great sense of humor that's good to know because a lot of people really think he's just like this guy that like doesn't say anything he just like he just shows up and and whatever but i, I it seems like he does have that personality uh, it's his it's his batman facade like you know that's why he he yes. really you know you know attaches to that you know because he gets put on the, ca- the cape and cowl and just like you know hide behind that i love that that's so that's so awesome yeah, yeah so you you really do gel a lot with a lot of guys uh i think like you know miles garrett white teller like the guys you just said uh, you, I mean, obviously you went viral for, uh, you know, playing Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons with Miles Garrett, Wyatt Teller, and, and uh, a couple other people, uh, which I think anytime the fans can kind of see your personal life and not just see you as a football player on the TV, I think it's like a really cool thing. So um, I have a couple questions to piggyback off of that. Have you, got, have you asked Baker and Nick Chubb to play? Have they said yes? Have they said no? And if you could play with uh, D&D with anybody in the NFL, any, any, any NFL player, who would it be? Uh, as far as asking Baker and Nick, um, you know, when I was, when I read originally brought it up to miles, we had started looking for other people to play. Um, Kendall was the first person I asked Kendall lamb, uh, Ken, who's not on the team anymore, but Kendall asked Wyatt, and that's how we ended up getting our core three group of people. Plus, uh, Jeremy and Sarah, um, uh, as part of uh, miles group. Um, I did, I think week 16, when we were in Pittsburgh, I asked, I asked Baker when we were like, in, oh. in the uh, group. Uh, I asked him like, Hey, you know, if you ever want to, if you ever want to join D and D next season, you know, it's, you know, the, the invitation's open and he's like, no chance in hell. Like, oh, <laughs> no. uh, which hey. is fine. You know, it's, it's not, uh, you know, not everybody's going to love it. And, you know, I think if, if you know, you're not going to like it, you know, sometimes you can be proven wrong, but you know, you don't want to waste four hours of your time trying it. Um, as far as Nick, I can definitely see Nick trying it. Um, I think oh. a lot of people open up when it comes to, uh, when it comes to that, you know, that sort of thing with Dungeons and Dragons and, uh, I can see Nick having a lot of fun with it. Um, man, that's a tough question now with anybody in the NFL. Uh, I think anybody who has like improvisational skills, like kind of the acting skills, a great sense of humor. Um, I mean, no, nothing's really popping off, you know, in the top of my head. Um, who, who, who do you, who, I mean, I know I'm kind of switching the question back on you, but can you think of anybody who kind of fills out that, those descriptions? It sounds like the dumbest thing ever, but I think Antonio Brown playing Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> oh, on no, camera no, would be no, the funniest. No, no, I know I shouldn't have said that, but that would be the funniest. No, no, no. Uh, you see some of the good imagination. With, with, Baker's act, with Baker's acting chops, I can see him being good at it. I think he would enjoy it. I think but, he would too. Uh, We're going to put some pressure on him on social media to do it. No, you know who I think actually <laughs> Jamal Williams uh, I actually okay. had a chance to interview him, uh, Lions running back. Yeah, and he lo- he's big and on like anime, um, and he just has such a, like a a huge character like in personality. I think I think I think he's probably played before, but I, I I'm sure he would he would take up on that if you guys were ever uh, in the same I'd area. Reach out. Yeah, he's yeah. he's one of my favorite people. Jamal Williams is hilarious. Yeah, you just need someone who won't take themselves too seriously. I feel like. Yeah, it's uh, true. It's yeah, true. so right now there's a big debate on like defensive player of the year. Like it's always between like Miles Garrett, Aaron Donald, T.J. Watt. It kind of seems like everyone talks value. Mm. 
being in the offensive meeting rooms, is there a defender that doesn't get enough credit that has a really big impact on games that might not show up on like stat sheets or anything like that? Man, it's, that's tough. There, there are so many games that we, we went through um, for, um, you know, looking at the defensive roster. Uh, obviously, you know, you always have to keep an eye on TJ Watt. Um, mm-hmm. You know, those edge rushers, um, Judon with the Patriots had, you know, a hell of a year, had a good game against us. He was definitely somebody that we were focusing on. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think it seems like it's going to come down to either Miles or TJ. And, you know, I know TJ got that, I think, uh, got a couple of sacks at the end of the year that, um, you know, might have pushed him over, but Miles is always going to be my rookie, my, excuse me, my uh, defensive player of the year. Yeah. Ours too. Go. Ours too. Yeah, ours too. Uh, we're pro Miles Garrett pod. Um, okay, so you have you have obviously, as we discussed, you have been in both uh, the Vikings and Browns locker rooms and have played with Kim Stefanski for, I believe, like like mo- like most of your career, if not all of it. So my question for you is, uh, what different what what differences have you noticed between playing in Minnesota and playing in Cleveland in terms of uh, the weather, the atmosphere? Um. I mean, I think coach coach Fancy does a really great job of keeping the culture on the team, you know, forward facing, um, making the, the values, uh, and the ideals of the team, uh, you know, always in focus where, you know, he always tells us at the start of every week, we are a smart, tough, accountable, resilient football team. And it spell it out without the football. It turns out it's start. So we have start on the back of our shirts. Uh, he's real. It's really like the, you know, the mantra of our whole team. And I think coach does a really good job of, you know, not only keeping us focused, but keeping it light. He has a great sense of humor. He's a very dry sense of humor. Um, as far as Minnesota goes, I got to be there preseason, my rookie year working with the running back room while he was a quarterback's coach. And then I was brought back in 2019, but only for two weeks when he was offensive coordinator. So I didn't get to spend, you know, an enormous amount of time with him. I've been, been able to spend much more time here in Cleveland. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I just see him as, as one of the like premier coaches in this league, especially offensive minds. Um, and, you know, I feel real lucky to be not only be, be playing for such a great coach, but also, you know, a coach that uses the fullback, <laughs> which, you know, like yeah. you said, isn't uh, everyone, you know, every team in the league. Yeah. Yeah. To kind of piggyback off that. I feel like it's kind of like a lost art right now. You know, it was, it was back in the day, like, you know, you heavily rely on the, on the fullback. I think of Larry Zonka, uh, there's 23 fullbacks that are under contract in the NFL right now. You and Janovich are two of them. Um, mm-hmm. kind of, could you kind of walk us through like the day in the life of a fullback, whether it's like in practice or a game? And, uh, do you think, you think you're a trendsetter here? Do you see fullbacks kind of making a comeback? You know, if you can bring versatility and toughness and a certain, you know, a specific skill set to a team, you're always going to be, uh, you're always going to be valuable. Um, you know, I think a lot of what brings value to the fullback position right now is being able to be versatile, being able to line up a tight end if you need to, being able to plan it, line up a running back if you need to. Um, you know, not just be the downhill run blocker, but also be in pass blocking sets, but to, to also be, you know, be able to run, uh, run out of the backfield and catch a ball in, in you know, in a route. Um, it really has become, like you said it earlier, it really has become a little bit of a Swiss Army knife position. Uh, you know, you don't look at, um, you know, Pat Ricard and Kyle Juszczyk necessarily being the same exact player playing the same position, but they're, you know, they're just different facets of the same position. And it, it, you know, it all encompassing tells you what you can bring to the, to the position. Um, I, I think that, you know, the more we can allow the fullback position to be, uh, well-rounded to be versatile. Uh, I think it's always going to have a position in, uh, in football, whether you call it the fullback, whether you call it the H back, uh, you know, no matter what it is, I think there's always going to be a, a, a spot for a, you know, a tough guy who will want to run downhill and hit somebody in the head. Yeah. And, uh, just before you, you ta- ask your question again, I'm going back to your, uh, your college days at Nebraska Saddleback and, uh, and UNLV. Are you, have you had any conversations with, I, I know I, I hate injuries. I don't want to talk about them, but at some point you always have like, uh, well, somebody might be the emergency quarterback. Have, are you ever the emergency quarterback uh, for the Browns since you have that experience from high school and college? Uh, you know, I'm sure that there will, you know, th- there might be that conversation once I'm like an every, every day active player. Um, but as, as long as uh, you know, if, if, if I'm continuing to just be a practice squad guy, which, you know, I'll always be thankful for a spot, but I'm ready to be, you know, a starter, you know, wherever, wherever it may be. And I, I, damn well sure hope it's in cleveland mm-hmm. um but uh 
if I'm an active, if I'm an active every week player that might end up being me until then it's going to be Jarvis because he's got a hell of an arm. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, if I'm an every, every day guy, I'll be, uh, I'll be sure to be in coach fancy's ears and, you know, letting them know that, you know, I can still throw the ball. I liked it too. Cause you said, you didn't say, uh, you know, if I'm in a, a, at the beginning, if I'm an everyday active guy, you said when I'm an act, everyday active guy, I, I think that mentality is, uh, it's, it's why you're in the NFL. I like yeah, that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, last one for me. You were talking about the versatility of fullbacks. As more teams start to get fullbacks, since apparently all the smart offensive coaches are doing it, so I think it's just going to be a trend. Are there any other traits they should look for in a good fullback besides versatility? My tight end. Sorry, not every linebacker is going to be trying to hit me as hard as they can as, while I'm hitting them as hard as I can. Usually I'm going to outsize them, and I'm going to probably win those battles when they try to go head-to-head with me. Um, you know, if you, you look at JOK, Jeremiah was Formoa, and he is not a guy who he's not a linebacker who will try to hit you as hard as he can when he's, you know, taking on blocks. He's a slippery dude. And I can tell you that from practice. And you know, that's where his skill set is. And that's where, you know, the linebacker position is going to more fast, athletic, slippery guys. And, and the fullback position has has answered. So when I was playing against the Eagles, um, I was missing blocks because they were avoiding them. They weren't going head to head like big guys like, you know, uh, Sione Taki Taki, who I was hitting every day in practice. And, you know, I was expecting it to be like that. Uh, I, they were avoiding blocks. And uh, I feel like I really did a good job this last season, this last off season of adjusting to that, really working on my change of direction, working on my, my tracking ability um, and, you know, just agility in general. And uh, being able to track somebody is, is a really uh, underappreciated trait at the fullback position. And it's, you know, when you, when you see a guy, you know, dip his shoulder and try to get past you and you can still put him in the ground, you can still lock him up in a block. Um, that just shows you that, you know, that guy has been able to work on it really well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, last question for me, Johnny, uh, describe your first touchdown, which is of course on Thursday night against the Broncos. Um, what was your reaction when the ball was coming toward you? What was it like to basically collect your first touchdown in the NFL? It was pretty surreal. Um, I got to, uh, you know, I knew that I was coming out on the goal line sets. Uh, so I knew that I was coming out there once, uh, once case brought it down to the one yard line with that QB scramble. Um, I'm thankful that one, he didn't get in the end zone because <laughs> he gave me a chance. And two, that he didn't, you know, that we picked up the fumble um, and that the NFL rules say that you can't forward the ball, you know, fumble the ball forward and land on it and gain those yards. So it also would have been a touchdown too. Um, yeah. You know, I tell people that I am so, so extremely glad that I got to score that if Dearness hadn't already scored his touchdown earlier in the game, I would have much preferred him to be been able to score his first touchdown before me. Um, but obviously he still got to do that. And I got to have my touchdown, which, uh, which felt pretty good. Two good guys that we, we all root for. I, I just have one more question just to, um, just to kind of summarize the, to, uh, just kind of like a last question for the, for the interview. Um, we, we appreciate your time. Um, what are some of your goals kind of going into uh, the 2022 season? I know you just uh, last week or whatever, nine days ago, you signed a reserved future contract with the Browns. Um, where do you want to see yourself uh, in 2022 personally? And where do you want to see the, where do you think the Cleveland Browns will be? Uh, assuming you're here, uh, which we, we hope you are in uh, 2022. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I think I obviously have, long-term goals and goals that I want, I see myself uh, getting to at some point and, you know, whether they're soon, whether they're, you know, in the, in the future, you know, I don't, I don't worry about that too much. I more go step at it, you know, one step at a time. And the next step for me is just becoming an everyday starter. Um, I want to be that for, for the team. And I want to be, uh, be somebody who contributes every single day. Um, as far as the Browns go, I, uh, I think that there were flashes in every game that we have what it takes to be, a Super Bowl contender, a, a team that can be feared going deep into the playoffs. And um, I just think it, it comes down to making sure that, you know, we are, we are built to last throughout the whole season. And I know every team is going to have injuries. I know our team was definitely was having its injuries and guys were fighting through it. Um, and it takes, you know, it takes a lot of luck to be able to get to that point too. You know, you, ha- you have to have a lot of injury luck. You have to have a lot of you know, blessings from the football gods. And, you know, this year it just didn't seem like it was going, going our way as much as, as we were hoping. Um, and, uh, I think it just, it just takes time to keep going at it, keep going at it. Um, cause that's what will end up happening to whoever wins the Super Bowl. Um, you know, there's not a single team this year who is just dominated among amongst the rest. Um, a lot, you know, every team that has played really well and whatever team ends up winning the Super Bowl is going to be a team that has lost games, has had its bad moments, 
Um, and, you know, being able to push past those is, is what makes Mark's a good team. And I see us doing that in this next year. Yeah, we see we see that too, and uh, you know your NFL journey, like we said, has been incredibly inspiring. Uh, we're gonna work on the Wikipedia article so that it, it's correct because that's 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 some bullshit. But uh, we we thank you so much for your time, Johnny, and uh, we know your your last chapter isn't anywhere close in, in the NFL. We know it's only up for here, so thanks so much for your time and best of luck uh, in the twenty twenty. I appreciate season. it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it, man.